All right, it's time to talk the beautiful game on the Sportsmax Zone. The Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League began its playoff stage this past Monday and two fiercely contested draws were played out. Let's see a reminder now of the results. All right, so while that loads, the first matchup saw Waterhouse play to a one-all draw with Tivoli Gardens, while the second contest featured the same scoreline with Arnett Gardens, scoring a late equaliser in their game against Portmore United. Well, those results have left all four teams with everything to play for in the second legs, set to take place on Monday at Sabina Park with Mount Pleasant and Cavalier awaiting the winners of each tie. Well, it's looking like these ties will be difficult to call, so we have enlisted our Sportsmax football analyst and self-proclaimed prediction guru, Lishay Williams, to preview these tantalizing clashes. So, Lish, welcome. Happy Friday. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty happy Friday, you know. It's and, been a long week. And I think it'll be a happier Monday because we have two fixtures. Um, they're all level and there's everything to play for. So let's start with the first fixture. Fixture. I'll go with the Portmore Annette Gardens one. Do you expect any major changes on Monday? No, um, in terms of how the game is going to flow, um, I don't really think that we're going to see too much of a change because these teams have played each other three times now so far this season and all of the games have been close. All of the games I've seen Portmore really start the better of the two teams and Arnett Gardens really growing into the game. And then when they do grow into the game, they have a level of sustained pressure which Portmore usually can take and then they get the equaliser which we've seen in the last two games. Um, adjustments are usually made by Xavier Gilbert at halftime. I think it's going to be imperative that Arnett Gardens start with the level of intensity that they haven't been doing and that they can get an early jump on Portmore because I think if Portmore were to fall behind and have to come out of their shell more, it would be a very uphill battle for Portmore and I think Arnett Gardens can really impose themselves but it's, it's easier said than done for sure. Yeah, Portmore last won the JPL in 2019, Arnett 2017. Um, if we are to go or make any sense of that, do you think that Portmore would have the advantage? I remember Chris actually saying on this show that he thinks Arnett has a slight edge. Yeah, I think so as well because Arnett, when they're in full flow, they're one of the better teams in the league. They've played some of the best football in the league over the past couple of seasons, even this season. Under Xavier Gilbert, they've been pretty impressive as well. But it's when they're in full flow. They're not always in full flow. As I said, when they come up against teams that can defend well, can defend deep, it forces them into somewhat of a lull and they don't really pick up the tempo like they should or they need to. And I think that can be something that can push them back. And that we've seen that with Portmore. We saw it against Cavalier at times during the regular season as well. So for this Arnett team, I think it's just very important for them to have the tempo. Uh, they're a young team, especially in the midfield areas. When you think about a Jaheim Thomas up front, they have Kaim Dixon. They're a team that can struggle to, you know, really impose themselves. They'll need to do that against a very experienced Portmore team. They do have their young players as well, but it's a team that has won recently. They won the All-Island Knockout last season. They, they were the more recent champions of the two, as they won in 2019. They have the most championships in um, the Real Navy Jamaica Premier League with seven. So they're, they're a team that knows how to win. It's going to be tough for Arnett. Arnett know how to win as well, of course, but <laughs> yeah. it, it's going to be tough with such a young team. Xavier Gilbert is first time in the playoffs as a coach, so it's going to be tough. But I do think that if they start the game in the right manner, that they can really push on and give this Portmore team a lot of problems. Yeah, you, you mentioned the fact that both clubs have been prolific in Jamaica Premier League history. Um, and that would represent the culture of the club and how they approach championships. But um, individually, if you look at the rosters, these players haven't known what it is like to win championships, with the exception probably of um, Fabian Reed, the Arnett Garns frontman. But I want to ask you about Siobhan Walsh, because he didn't play the entire game in the first leg here. I think he's one of the most potent attacking players in the Premier League. And if he gets a start, as we expect he might on Monday, how much a difference do you think that could make to Portmore's chances? I think that would make a huge difference because, you know, you, know, you mentioned that a lot of the players in these current squads haven't really won in the Jamaica Premier League, but I mentioned that Portmore United won the Al-Ila knockout last season. And this was, was a Portmore team that 
didn't make it into the playoffs last season, the JPL, but they caught form towards the end and they were pretty unfortunate not to make it into the top six, but they carried that form and they did really well in the All Island knockout, ended up winning it and a huge reason why they won it was the top scorer of the competition and player of the competition, Chevron Walsh. He was fantastic. He scored um, basically at every stage of the competition, scored in the final as well. And he's a player I think that can really, a striker especially, that can put a team on his back because of his play style, how integral he is to And he's big to and them. strong. Exactly. Yeah, he's yeah. big. He can be a hold-up striker. Yeah. He has excellent shooting from range and a good box presence as well. So not only with his goal scoring, but if Portman United are defending deep and they need an out ball, he can be that player to really wheel them up the pitch, win fouls, and, and, and get a goal out of nothing, which is also something that we saw in the All-Ireland final last season. So I think out of all of the strikers left in the competition, obviously you have to mention Fabian Reed because he's a proven commodity over 80 goals in the Jamaica Premier League, a former champion as well. So I, I do think that maybe with the exception of Fabian Reed, Siobhan Walsh is the biggest X, X factor as a striker left in the competition. Yeah. The Waterhouse Tivoli matchup, um, how do you see that one going? Because that was just as competitive as the Arnett Portmore game was. Yeah, I think that's another close encounter because the very first game of the season, very first match week of the season, Tivoli, I think, caught Waterhouse by surprise. This was a Tivoli team that finished in 11th place, only got 22 points last season. So coming out the first game of the season and really putting on a show at National Stadium, won 3 0. Um, later in the season, it was a much closer game. Tivoli won 1 0. And then when we move on to the playoffs now, I think Waterhouse really adjusted their play style there, employed a much higher press, especially in the first half. And they were a much more uh, aggressive team and they forced Tivoli in uncomfortable situations. It's, Tivoli weren't allowed to do the things that they do really well that make, made them good for majority of the regular season until probably the last 30 minutes or so. So I think Waterhouse and Marcel Gale did a really good job of nullifying a lot of Tivoli's threats. And I think it's going to be a pretty close one. But if all things are equal and Tivoli can start the game like they ended it and carry that momentum over, I do think that this Tivoli team has the beating of Waterhouse. Okay, and did you comment on the, well, give a clear prediction on the Portmore game? I didn't give a clear prediction, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go. I think it's, both of the games are going to be close, but the two winners that I see coming out of it by hook or by crook, yes. I, I think it's going to be Arnett and Tivoli moving through. Yeah, Chris, okay. Chris so, said that too. So, yeah, be, be, be careful when they get into the semifinals that you say anything negative about Mount Pleasant because Ramarack has on a Mount Pleasant jersey, so you'll have to edit some of what you feel about Mount Pleasant. No, I, I, I'm not one to, first of all, I'm not one to edit anything I say. I, I always say... Okay, well, just sit closer to Lance, that's all. <laughs> so the set will look like Lance, you, and then me on this side. Well, and my Mount Pleasant uh, team. I, I, I've never seen Ra um, Maya holding all of this energy from Mount Pleasant <laughs> until a week ago. Right, they Ma gave me a shoot, so no. Well, maybe I didn't I... have a JPL team, let me be really honest. I mean, I look at the football, we discuss it on the show, but I've never really been so involved in it, right? So I appreciate the good football and everything. But then my trainees decided to get me involved. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there, there's no problem with that. I, I, I unfortunately, I think Sir Lance as well, I, I can't claim a JPL team. I just like watching football, yeah, you know. it's the same uh, thing. Then. But I, I'm not one to say anything I'm bad about Mount Pleasant. I've said that they're the best team in the league for yeah. all season, yeah. all the last season as well, so... Yeah. Yeah, break, that, break that, time. That, that's how it goes. Break time, Lynch. We, we, we have to go now. We have just a little time left on the show. And when we come back, we have our Sportsmax last moment and interactive to put the lid on this week. Back in a moment.